Welcome back to Finnegan's Garage. Today is a monumental occasion because nearly two years ago, Boshears and I introduced you to what would eventually become this big block Chevy. In a video, I think it was episode 24, we talked about different weights between cast iron and aluminum cylinder heads and engine blocks. And at that moment, I said I was gonna build a 598 cubic inch big block Chevy using a Brodix block and Brodix heads and then eventually show it to you. Um, this is it. It's no longer a 598. We actually went smaller with it for a couple of reasons, and I'll tell them to you right now. But this thing is finally done, and it's about ready to hit the dyno. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what the parts and pieces are, and also how to stab a brand new distributor in a brand new engine. over the basics here. That is a Brodix standard deck aluminum engine block. It's based off the old school Mark IV 454. This has a standard deck height of 9.80 inches. That's measured from the center line of the crank up to the deck surface here. It has a 55 millimeter cam tunnel, which enables you to put a big camshaft in here with roller bearings. It has a Lunati billet crankshaft. It has CP Carrillo pistons. They look a lot like these. These are giant. These are 4700 bore. This is out of the turbo boat motor. The ones in this engine are 4600 bore, also pretty damn big. And I mentioned earlier that it's no longer a 598. Once we did the math, I really wasn't comfortable with the piston design that would have been a result of doing a big stroke short deck motor. Um, the stroke for this was originally gonna be four and a half inches. And when you do that with a short deck and a long rod, you end up with a piston that has a really short compression height, a wrist pin that ends up in the oil ring, which isn't the end of the world, but the top of the piston ends up being very thin. And I wasn't comfortable with that. So we shortened the stroke in this motor. So it's a 4600 bore, but it's a 4.375 inch stroke. And when you do that, you can put a 6.535 inch rod in here and end up with a stronger piston at the end of the day. So, it's got Lunati crankshaft, CP Carrillo bullet connecting rods, which the bullet series is an off the shelf rod made out of the same forgings as Carrillo's custom race connecting rods. It's a really good part, but you can call up and get standard links um, off the shelf the same day, basically. Uh, pistons are custom, as we went over before. It is topped with Brodix SR20 conventional cylinder heads. Now these are a 20 degree valve angle cylinder head with a raised 440 cc intake port that through a 2400 valve flows over 500 CFM of air. It's incredible. On the exhaust side, it, it flows 335 CFM through a 1.80 inch exhaust valve. Um, this is next level conventional head technology. It's not a spread port head. It doesn't have three different length push rods. It doesn't need a whole bunch of weird stuff to make it work like some of the older quote unquote pro stock cylinder heads that everyone have been using for the last 10 or 15 years. Um, really excited to see what this thing makes. I'm guessing we're probably gonna be right around 900 horsepower naturally aspirated. Now, with a 40 thousandths of an inch thick Cometic MLS gasket, and these cylinder heads and these pistons zero decked, which means they're flush with the top of the deck surface. This has a 13 and a half to one compression ratio. Uh, the owner of the motor doesn't mind running race fuel. It's going in his boat. He buys it by the drum. And so this is gonna run on probably 110 octane race fuel and last for years to come. It's got a medium to large-ish bullet solid roller camshaft. It has about 800 thousandths of an inch lift on the exhaust side with a 1.7 rocker. It has 880 thousandths of an inch lift on the intake side with a 1.7 rocker. The heads are filled with the best aluminum shaft rockers from Jezel we could get. We've got 903 tie bar lifters, um, really nice valves in this thing from Manly. Um, it's just a great piece and it's topped off with Holly's brand new Gen 3 Dominator carb. This is an all aluminum carburetor, billet pieces everywhere. It's 5 16ths of an inch taller than the original Dominator. 
Uh, and what that does is it allowed Holly to make the Venturis a larger radius, a bigger transition. And when you do that, you get more airflow. You can order one of these up to 1,475 CFM of airflow, which is bananas for one carburetor. And as a result of that, they had to make the fuel bowls 20% larger to go with all that extra airflow. Now this one is 1,350 CFM, more than enough for this engine. And we're about to send this out to California to West Tech Performance. My buddy Steve Berlay has got some tricks for making a three circuit Holly Dominator work really well uh, at part throttle. So he will be the one dyno testing and tuning this engine. And with any luck, he'll bust out his iPhone for me and shoot some video of that. And yeah, this thing is gonna be a beast. My friend's gonna love it. And uh, I can't wait to see the numbers. So we've talked before about how to install a distributor in an engine 454 in the ramp truck comes to mind. You know, we've talked about how to find TDC, all that stuff, but what we haven't talked about is how to install a distributor to ensure that the gear is meshed properly, not only with the camshaft, but also that the oil pump drive on the bottom of the gear is meshed properly with the stick inside the motor that spins round and round and round. So let's do that right now. This is an interesting distributor, all right? This is an MSD part number 85505. This is an adjustable slip collar distributor. See this collar on here? It slides on, and then with set screws, you can adjust the height of the distributor in the engine block, all right? This is very helpful because not every engine is standard. Not every engine has a consistent deck height. Not every intake manifold is the same. This gives you the ability to make sure that this gear meshes perfectly, not only with the gear on the back of the camshaft, but also with the oil pump drive shaft. Another interesting thing about this distributor is it has no built-in advanced mechanism for the ignition timing. If you look close, you'll see a reluctor wheel and nothing else in there. If I hold the bottom of the distributor and try to turn the rotor, nothing happens. So what that means is this has to be installed in the engine with your total ignition timing in mind. So let's just say for round numbers, we wanted 40 degrees of ignition timing in here. We would drop this in and adjust it to 40 degrees and cinch it down. Then we'd rely on a programmable ignition box to retard the timing, whatever mount we wanted at various points in the RPM curve. So it, it's backwards. You don't put this in at 10 degrees initial and then have a centrifugal or vacuum advanced system turning the timing up. You turn the timing all the way up with this immediately and then use an ignition box that's programmable with a laptop to retard the timing at various times. Say when nitrous is turned on or at part throttle or you know idle, whatever. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna coat the gear in some uh, grease, we're gonna drop it in there until it bottoms out. Once it bottoms out, we'll lift it up 10 thousandths of an inch, tighten down our slip collar on our base gasket. Then we're gonna take some other measurements to determine the right depth for this to engage the oil pump drive shaft. As you can see, our collar is on. Now we're gonna put our base gasket on and you wanna do these things before you put the grease on the gear, otherwise you're just gonna make a mess. All right, base gasket's on, collar's on. Now we're gonna install it. Okay, so we're all the way down, right? And we have the wrong distributor because this is for a tall deck motor. <laughs> Oops. So as you can see, there's our clamp, right? This is meant to clamp to this area. But this is a standard deck height Chevrolet engine. All right, so nine, 800 inches. A tall deck engine is 10, 200 inches as measured from the center line to the crank of the crank out to the deck surface here. So as the motor gets taller, you need a taller distributor. This is the distributor for a tall deck engine, not a standard deck engine. So our options here are go get the right distributor or make a spacer 
for that thing to sit down on. Because right now, if I put it down where it needs to be, it can't clamp on here. So that's no bueno. So we'll order another one. And then we'll do this again later. Let's try this again. On the right, part number 85505, the distributor we've already shown you. On the left, 85703. Significant differences in these right here. Okay, the one on the right, obviously longer for a tall deck motor than the one on the left. One on the left also has a shorter distributor cap. And this does not have the bronze gear. The key here when selecting distributor gears, right, is you wanna make sure this material is softer than the material the gear on the camshaft is made of, okay? That's the important part. Let's try this again. Okay. Oh, real quick. What are these for? Uh, those O-rings seal this to the cam tunnel, all right? And so if you're missing these in certain applications, the oil won't flow around this and go down the main gallery for all the lifters. Okay. Uh, but some blocks aren't clearanced enough for these O-rings that go in these two grooves. And when you end up putting the distributor in, it'll either cut the O-ring or you'll never get the distributor back out. Um, the O-rings are important, but you have to make sure they actually will function with your application. Okay. Um, this might go in for a shot. I might have to pull the cap off the distributor. We'll see. We're gonna take the cap off that way. You can grab the rotor and make sure that it's actually locked in the oil pump drive. Okay. So that seems like it's all the way down. Okay, so then what you do is slide the slip collar down and then you wanna raise it back up between 10 and 30 thousandths of an inch. Now when you take the distributor out, just move it down 20 thou. And tighten it. Beautiful. A 20 thousandths thick feeler gauge. It should get you close to where you want to be. We wiped the excess grease out of there, stabbed the distributor, rotated it three times around, and now, as you turn this, it looks like we've got a pattern close to the middle, if not a little bit low on the gear, but it will work, it'll definitely work. Uh, and now that we have this set, the other measurement we're gonna make now is we're gonna check the engagement of the bottom of the gear into the top of the oil pump drive rod. And to do that, we need to know the distance from the base of the gasket to here. And then we need to know the distance from here, from here down to the top of the drive rod. Subtract those two things, much like setting up a clutch throughout bearing, and that is your engagement. So for you guys at home that don't have a pair of dial calipers, we're gonna use a ruler for this. And it looks like we are at, let's see here. We're right there, so six and five eighths. That's what I'm getting there. And then from here to here is seven and a quarter. Okay, so let's do the math here. Here's our intake manifold, right? Here's our slip collar, and here's our distributor. Spark plug terminals up top there. Okay, distributor comes all the way down here, and you've got your gear, and right here, we should have engagement with our oil pump drive rod. So what our dimensions told us were from the intake manifold, so the top of our drive rod was six and five eighths. 
And then from our slip collar, which is also at our intake manifold, down to the bottom of the gear was seven and one quarter inches. Which means we have engagement, obviously, we weren't able to turn the rotor, but we have over half an inch of engagement there, closer to three quarters, which is plenty. So this will connect to this, turn our rotor, all will be right with the world. Dude, you need to be an artist. Does that even make sense to anybody but me? <laughs> it's perfect. I have sloppy handwriting, but whatever. As long as they get the point. I mean, we're not using an HEI distributor, but whatever. <laughs> uh, it's practically the same thing. Now that we know we have proper gear mesh and proper engagement into our oil pump drive shaft, I'm going to take the white lithium grease out of the gear and I'm going to use the supplied Lucas Oil Racing Performance Gear Break-In Lubricant and Protectant. I'm going to liberally coat that thing. Make sure this doesn't wear out during the engine break-in. Drop this in, install some spark plugs, some MSD 8.5 millimeter spark plug wires, and ship this thing to California so Steve Brule can make beautiful noises with this. The danger is you go through all this work to put this on and then you find out the distributor doesn't fit in the engine block because the engine block wasn't clearanced enough for it. Then you gotta pull it out and, and then you gotta start it over again. I hope these don't stay down in there. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna try it anyway. Okay, there we go. The rings are on. The lube there and there. Lube the plug. Lube the plug <laughs> and then lube my shorts. <laughs> We have put our ATI balancer at 35 degrees before top dead center. That's a guess of what this engine will like as far as timing. And we're now gonna attempt to stab the distributor in and align, oh. No way. Yeah, and align the rotor with number one. We were real close. So there it is. It is in, it is pointing at number one. We can now rotate the housing, get one of the reluctors lined up, Put the cap on, spark plugs, wires, and this is ready to go to the dyno. Wow. Yeah. That was easy. All right. So the O-rings worked. O-rings worked.